I think number one, uh, the biggest mistake or the most sort of common mistakes is, um, look, it's a bit of cliche, a lack of planning. So I often talk about, you know, you must have a business plan or some sort of planning that, um, you know, more detailed plan thought through rather than I've got a great idea, I've got a great opportunity or I'm passionate about food or I love coffee therefore I'm buying a cafe. Yes. So, uh, you know, rather than just a great or great idea or great location rather than a detailed plan. So that's probably one of the um, uh, very common mistakes I see. Um, you know, with a lot of so people. is that they're not knowing their target market, they're not knowing exactly what it is they're going to do, they're just more just coming from a lifestyle point of view that they think it's going to be a great change for them? I think all of the above. So um, you know, so often people go, okay, I've got um, you know a great idea. I've got investor, or I've got my um, family who's you know love coffee, or um, you know have restaurant background, or I have an investor. Um, that's all very good point. But how do you make it work? So uh, in a well documented and researched business plan, we should cover all of those areas. So you know how much will be involved. Um, how much capital will be involved, who's going to be the person managing the business, how will the team come together, um, what the cash flow business will be, you know, what the cash flow situation, yeah. when is the break even, if there's partners involved or family member involved, what are the responsibilities um, and the obligations financially, emotionally and physically, what are the roles and you know, the, um, uh, the rewards or the payment. In most cases I've seen um, you know, with new businesses that cash flow could be tight and but you still have to you know work so a lot of time you don't get paid that's very stressful in yes. a lot of sense so things fall apart so uh, a good planning or covering all of those you know aspects before you get into the business okay, is a so very good exercise. Is, planning is the first one. Mm, yeah okay. so that's one of the, the, the common yeah common area people um, sort of lacking detail planning. The second common uh, mistakes people make, and I see very often, is uh, the cash flow or enough allowing enough capital or perhaps the backup money to sustain the business. Look, it, it's probably not an issue for someone who's got um, you know, a lot of money or a lot of investment or if they buy into a goodwill, the cash flow is ticking over, that's not a problem. But I have often seen a lot of people go into the business having just enough money to invest into the goodwill or the setup of the cafe and not leaving enough for Things like, you, you know, you've done this before, you know, for a new start business often, you might not have enough cash flow, so you need to cover your living expenses, yep. you need to cover um, your, you know, rent, or you even need to cover, maybe there's a shortfall to uh, allow the business to grow, so in the well, meantime... things that you haven't thought of that you have to buy. Yeah, the equipment, um, the staff, the rent. So until your business reach that break-even point, or allow to give you a positive cash flow, who's there to cover the shortfall. So I've seen a lot of people you know, in that leading up time not allowing enough uh, backup money, so therefore they run out of money and they get stuck in the situation there. You know, they come back on the market and then the business mm. for sale. So that will be one of the areas that allowing that extra money or have access to that extra money um, to you know, uh, allow the business to grow and until break even. So that's probably the most difficult phase of any new business. Yeah. One of the other um, sort of mistakes or key points is having the right staff. Look, it's another cliche everyone knows. Having the right staff is um, either break or make your business. So that's exactly the point. Um, so having the the right key staff to um, you know support the cafe owners um, to build up the business or even manage the business is is vital. So I often say um, hire slow, fire fast. I certainly learned that in my first um, business, it took me three months to fire the cook who was consistently not showing up and sending out food that was not um, you know, up to standard. It took me three months to do that before I you know, um, had the courage or the confidence to say you're gone because I was scared. You know, If he's gone, I don't know how to cook. So, um, but then looking back, had you know, had that been the, a good decision, having the right people, and everything would just sink in. So now you know, I have um, a number of businesses where having the right staff, and then I can walk away from the business, and the business will run. Okay. So what are you looking for when you when you first hire? Do you do the hiring yourself these days? Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. we well, actually not only we do the hiring ourselves, we have a hiring system called oh, okay, yeah. yeah a recruitment. We call it a group interview recruitment system. Right. Um, so it's a it's a filtering system where we have as many applications as possible um, or applicants, and then. Um, you know, so filtering through to have as many applicants in the group interview situation, and then the next you know, filtering process is the trial, and then we put them on a three month, um, like a probation yes. period, and it's a testing period. So until that person's got the right number one attitude, yeah, yeah, skill can be trained, you can't train attitude. So the right attitude, um, so that's what you're looking for first. Is just looking for attitude straight the, away. The, straight away. The, that's number one, attitude and mindset, attitude. Number two would be, depending on the position, whether they have the right skill or not. Uh, if not, that can be trained or can be um, you know, um, retrained. And, uh, um, and then looking for staff who is looking at you know, going the extra mile, so that way that can be groomed to be in the supervisory or manager's position. And uh, yeah, and that way they can help, you know, any or help certainly in my situation, help me to build up the business and be groomed to be a supervisor and manager so I can be, you know, leveraged out. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> um, high, slow, high, fast. high, slow, five, fast. I've learned the hard way. So, um, um, you know, one of the, um, I'll just make a quick one of the interesting stories. There was a staff that wasn't was actually competent enough but wasn't really suited to one of my business took me a year to ponder you know he's competent efficient but wasn't really the right managerial position that was looking for took me a year to let her go and as soon as that position was filled had someone else who matched my requirements I was able to have the business and the management fully walk away in three to six months time where it took me a year. So I've learned, um, probably that's the advice to go, okay, having you know the right people that suits you rather than hiring someone that just to fling to do the yeah. work. 